Following on from a previous uh, video I made uh, of this block setting crane, uh, there's been quite a bit of interest so I thought I'd make a second uh, video with a bit more detail uh, of Meccano block setting cranes and this block setting crane in particular. I'm not an expert on these, there are quite a few people who study these in some depth, uh, but uh, this, this is my version of a uh, Stellard and Pitt block setting crane. The majority of these models are based on the Stellard and Pitt uh, block setting cranes or Titan cranes which were built at their yards in Bath and here is a good example of uh, two cranes. Probably the most famous of all the plans produced uh, for block setting cranes was the special model leaflet number 4 which was introduced in the late 1920s. Uh, this model was always touted as the largest Meccano model which plans were produced for and it's quite a, a good model. It's well constructed, a lot of pieces in it, quite a rigid model. It makes use of the geared roller bearing which was a new part introduced in the 1920s by Meccano. And I guess one of the areas which is not particularly great as in a lot of Meccano models is the actual gearbox. This particular gearbox um, relies on a brake mechanism which is operated by this bush wheel here for, opera for stopping uh, loads falling back. Uh, it also has one of the earlier motors in which drives through a worm wheel through reduction gearing which is not ideal and if you make the real model it does have trouble moving on its uh, on its wheels. But nevertheless not a bad attempt. In 1937 uh, a new version of the block setting crane was produced which um, utilised the uh, blue and gold livery that was uh, around for a short while in the late 1930s. Uh, I've never actually seen one of these made up but it must have been quite a striking model. Uh, when you look at the gearbox it's a pretty simple gearbox compared with the, uh, the amount of parts that were available. Uh, the motor this time doesn't drive through a worm, it drives directly through reduction gear into the mechanism and that probably gives it um, quite a lot of power, although I've never actually seen one of these actually made up. Then in the 1950s when um, the uh, number 10 set uh, model plans were revised. Uh, yet another version of the block setting crane came out. Um, this is quite a spindly model uh, compared with some of the earlier ones. Um, not brilliant in the way that the, the mechanism operates. Very sim relatively simple mechanism uh, for operating the various functions of the crane. And possibly the most famous uh, block setter in Meccano is uh, the one that uh, was on the cover of manuals um, through the, the uh, late 1930s and into the 1950s. Um, although there were never any plans actually produced for this particular model. The same model was on the front of the accessory outfit manuals as well. Uh, as shown there. A bit later on in the 1950s the block setting crane was replaced by a dragline crane which was probably a more modern model at that point. So although there were no official plans made of this particular block setter uh, there was a, a very nice attempt made at reproducing it in a model plan by Bill Steele and it's using this plan that, uh, that, that I've attempted my model but with a different gearbox. This version of the block setter is often called the pinion block setter because that's the name of the guy who did the original painting. A wooden base of the model uh, are fitted with two brass strips to provide power to avoid having trailing cables going to the mechanism. 
I didn't use uh, channel segments as in the original model mainly because I haven't got any and they're quite difficult to get hold of um, but I have used a 1960s tooth ring which you see sandwiched there on top of that is a spider which is made up of uh, mainly half inch pulleys on which the whole structure rests on the crane's a tremendous weight and is actually too much for me to lift on its own so and it actually splits in the middle and the only actual part that connects the two is this drive shaft here and we put flats on there because it's transmitting quite a load and there's a coupling that connects those two together and once they're connected that's the only thing that actually connects the rotating jib from the base place the top on it's just important to make sure that all those pulleys are engaged to bear the weight of the top jib so the basic structure of the model is uh, following on from Bill Steele's work uh, in understanding the pinion block setter um, however the engine house I have uh, redesigned that tried to follow as near as possible uh, with the limits of Meccano the um, actual layout of the engine house. So what we have is a lever frame on the side uh, through gearbox and then a simulated steam engine and boiler at the back. Uh, it just so happens that the scale for this is reasonably close to 16mm garden railway size so there's two figures are 16mm garden railway figures which I think just add a little bit to the model. There are uh, wipers made of electrocute parts on the, either side of the model which collect the current for powering uh, the machine. A couple of lights on here, one on the uh, under frame which you can possibly just see there and another one operated by this switch here in the engine house As occasionally the rails get dirty, what I've added to the electrical circuit is a stay alive capacitor. So if I switch the model on, the engine's running, and then switch the model off, you'll see that the capacitor leaves it going for, keeps it going for a fraction of a second. Just enough to keep it uh, going along any uh, dirty bits of track. The model is powered by a small 12 volt motor through reduction gears and through a chain drive up into the main gearbox. This lever frame operates for various functions at the moment. The hoist is in operation. That lever is for the hoist. This one is to move the carriage. This one is for swiveling the jib round. The next one is a reverse lever, which reverses all the different mechanisms. And finally we've got the travelling wheels off this end one. You can just see those uh, turning now, moving the machine backwards. The motor itself is uh, slightly underpowered and also, to be honest, the gear ratio is slightly lower than what they would ideally be. But nevertheless, the model does work. There is a clutch which slips if the GMB is swinging around as it is at the moment and it strikes anything just to stop it crunching up the mechanism. This 
simulated a, uh, a little crane on the back for lifting up coal into the firing position from the floor. Lachlan Meccano in this is second hand with Meccano, which you know, is quite badly damaged. So it's been re-sprayed in Meccano green and Meccano red as appropriate. 